Righto, now let's see if the Dell XPS 139370 is any good for video editing. One of the most common questions I get asked other than what game does it play and so I dedicate a whole video just to video editing. I will be using Premiere because that's what I use. So if you're definitely interested in this XPS 13, make sure you subscribe, one stop shop here. And I have a lot of other great content coming out, so watch out for that. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down there in the comments. I will get back to you, I do read all my comments, so I think I deserve a like for that. Nevertheless, let's get into this. So this model here is the i5, eight gigabytes of RAM. So let's see, does it handle SD content? And what I will say is definitely get the 16 gigabytes RAM if you're thinking about video editing. Eight gigabytes is not enough. I'll just show you a little video here. When I rendered a 4K project, which I used to test rendering times, it was hitting that hard drive like hard because it ran out of memory. Eight gigabytes of memory, it's not enough. So definitely get 16 gigs if you're interested in video editing. This here is just standard definition content look here for this green dot if you're looking on the phone you may have to get a bigger screen but you may be able to see this green dot where i'm hovering over here once that turns yellow we are dropping frames okay so this is standard definition let's play it and apologize for the planes again okay it'll play through standard definition at oh that's half we'll turn that to full okay it'll play standard definition <laughs> at full no problems so standard definition you're covered i'll just do this little test how many streams i can do okay three streams no problem doesn't drop frames so standard def you're covered now i will open a, a 4k project and i will close it just because this is an 8 gig model with an i5 i don't want to waste any memory so I will reopen a project instead of having two sequences open at the same time. It's 4K, okay, it has color correction. And as you'll see, a 13 inch laptop with no graphics card. It is a bit choppy, okay? So you, this is the difference, okay? An XPS 15 will play this at full with all these color corrections, these high resolution photos. No problem, because that has a graphics card, four gigabyte, 1050. Now, the MacBook Pro 15 inch, I would have to drop that down to half to make it play. 13 inch, there's no hope of making this play. So I just play it. As you can see, it drops frames straight away and you'll see it looks a bit choppy, right? Doesn't look smooth, it's not that bad. Actually, if you through the photos, it won't look too bad, but once you get to the color corrected footage, which is here, you can see it looks like frame by frame, it's choppy. So I know for a fact that really to get a editable playback, you need quarter 4K content, okay? So we'll just play that again. Now it is still dropping frames, but it is, you know, nearly smooth enough to edit like this at quarter. It is still a bit choppy, but it's manageable. It's not the best experience, but hey, it doesn't have a graphics card. At one eighth. Okay, a bit smoother again. And what does that look like, that one eighth? Yeah, it doesn't look that great. But um, it is pretty smooth at one eighth. I will go back. And I will put that on one quarter again. Play that back. And you'll see it's pretty smooth at one eighth. I mean, sorry, one quarter. That's editable. And um, I'll just go here and scrub, scrub a bit. You know, it's not super fast, but that is manageable at one quarter. 4K, that's with color correction, high resolution photos. You can do it, it's not the best experience, but where this excels is really at full HD content. But it actually can play back 4K content too. I will show you. Now a lot of people will think Final Cut 
will play back this 4K content. I'll just delete this. Um, that is the color correction. That was an adjustment layer. So I'll just see if it plays it at real time now. And as you'll see, without the color correction, it can play at a quarter without dropping frames. All right, see if we can go to half. Now, typically you do the color correction at the end. So this won't really be an issue. Again, at half, it'll play back 4K content, no problem, without the color correction. The color correction is what kills it. And let's see if we can play it back at full. I don't think so. There you go, drops frame straight away. We'll just go back, check it again. I mean, there will be a bit of caching, but I still think it will drop frames. Nope, we're not dropping. That's probably just caching. Uh, I'll just delete this other one. See how long it lasts. Okay, so if it's gonna drop frames, we'll start dropping now. Plays it at full. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, there you go, started dropping frames there. So, played it at full for a while. You know, if you want to edit 4K, you could definitely, I think, put it at half if you've got no color correction. We'll just have a look here, half. Oh, drop some frames again. So, yeah, 4K. Probably not the best tool, but I think it's manageable without color correction, maybe on half, with it, on quarter. Now you might think, well, in Final Cut, if I have a 4K video, it'll play back no problems. And the reason being is, I will show you what Final Cut does. People think it's some sort of magic optimization that Apple does with their hardware. That's just a myth actually so what final cut does is it basically um uncompresses the files okay so when you import a file into final cut automatically it'll render it out in the background uncompress it and change it to prores okay so when you're getting smooth playback with final cut it's actually doing that for you okay now with Premiere Pro, it's a professional application. Like Final Cut is more for prosumers. So it does a lot of things for you just without you knowing. Like Premiere will never do that. But anyway, so this is 4K. Now I've rendered this out into Cineform, which is very similar to ProRes. And let's see, actually, I know that it will be able to play this at full, no problem. And boom, it does. So basically, when you hear people saying, wow, that 4K content, I can edit it with my MacBook Pro 13-inch 4K content, no problem. Well, that's the reason why, because it's actually converting it to Cineform in the background. There's no magic, you know, optimization or whatever. It's just, that's what it does. And if you do that manually yourself, as I just did there, it'll play back that content at full. So in actual fact, if you done best practice and actually converted your footage to say Cineform or even ProRes and then imported it into Premiere, this could edit 4K content no problem without fuss, okay? When you add the color corrections at the end, yes, it will probably start struggling then, but 4K content, if it's converted to Cineform or ProRes or something like that, it'll edit 4K, but straight out of your camera, it's not the best for 4K because it's very compressed, has to uncompress that footage. You know, powerhouse laptops like the XPS 15, they won't worry. They'll still be able to actually play through all this full compression there, full res, 4K with color corrections, but um, not a 13 inch without a graphics card. Okay, so let's see how she does with uh, full HD content. So this is H.264, typical of what you would get out of a phone or a camera. It is compressed. It hasn't been uncompressed like to Cineform or, you know, a ProRes or anything like that. We have it on full and we'll see how it plays through it. And as you'll see, this thing can video edit um, full HD content, no problems. 
I'll talk about rendering times in a minute. But with 4K, it could play 4K at half, it could play it even at full without any effects, maybe for a little bit. If you uncompressed it to Cineform or to uh, ProRes, you could edit 4K. And if you put it to an external hard drive, like a fast SSD, and connected it to that and uncompressed it to Cineform or ProRes again, um, you would be able to edit 4K content. But not many people do that. They just take their you know, their raw file out of the um, camera and put it on the machine and it's not going to be able to do that. It doesn't have a video card. Laptops with graphics cards, they can do that, no problems, but uh, not ones without it. So as you can see there, it will not drop frames with 1080p content. So what I'll do here, we'll see if it will play those streams simultaneously. We'll see, can it play back all those streams um, at full and not drop frames. Oh, look at that. Four full HD streams, no problem. So editing full HD is not an issue at all. I just mentioned if you want to edit 4K, how to do it. Um, best practice is always to uncompress, convert to um, Cineform or whatever. I've already shown that it can play through high resolution photos when I was in that 4K project before. All right, finally, now let's add some transitions and a bit of color correction, see how we go there. All right, cross dissolve, one there, yeah, whatever. Um, one there, and one here. Okay. See if it plays through those transitions. Watch out for the green light there. Will it go yellow? Of course, full HD content, no problem as usual. It's playing that back at full. I'm gonna hit the transition. Three, two, one. Let's go. Straight through, straight through that transition. At full, no problems. See if we can go through the second one. And here we go. Second one, no problem. So it has no problems with transitions. We'll do a bit of color correcting. Full HD, it will scrub like a champ. So smooth. All right, let's try and do some color correcting it. Let's see what it does then. Let's go to color. I'll just, I don't know, load. Instead of loading a lot, I'll just mess around with the color. We'll say we want to increase and load the blacks. Bit of contrast, bit of saturation. Um, sharpen her up a little bit. Let's see how we go. Okay, so finally it is killed. Color correction, it's not going to do with this XPS 13. It's just not going to happen. Now let's see at half if it's any good. So color correction you usually do last anyway at half. It has no problems playing the color corrected clip back. So there you have it, I guess. So it's pretty good. I'll just copy those settings. Okay, so we'll just color, uh, just copy in the, um, the color corrections on each of them and if I do play that at full it's not going to work obviously we've already established that but how is it scrubbing like that seems okay scrubbing like that and it's not playing them at real time you can see it's dropping frames it's not as smooth as it should be but um it's still editable editable it still is, even at full. But for best, I would go half after color correction. 
Yeah, nice and smooth scrub in there. Nice smooth playback. Half is the way to go, and half is what I usually use on a laptop anyway, even though the XPS 15 can pretty much play content with color correction and so on. I usually put it at half because it's just super smooth that way. And at the end, I'll put it at full. Boom, there you go. This can video edit, standard definition, full HD, 4K, not the best, especially if it's compressed. If you want to work on the files, uncompress them, put them on external hard drives, I said before, yep, no problems. You will be able to edit 4K content, but it's not going to be the best. Okay, you need a graphics card. i5 versus i7. I would say that really doesn't matter, but you do want the 16 gigs RAM because it will start right into the disk when you render if you only have 8 gigabytes, especially with a 4K project. Full HD, not so much, but 4K, definitely it will hit the RAM limit and it will start managing right into the disk and it will just slow down the render time. So you need the 16 gigs. If you want to video edit, I just recommend 16 gigs full stop. Now, in terms of render time, I didn't want to use the 4k project which I use on all my laptops to compare because as I said it was hitting that um, RAM issue where it didn't have enough RAM so I just rendered out a two minute video and I compared it to the dual core seventh generation to this one and more or less it stands up to that 40% faster than the dual core so this will also depend on effects if how many photos you have um, color correction and stuff like that but generally that 40 percent over the last generation dual cores will sort of stand up most of the time so i think this xps 13 is as good as you're going to get in a 13 inch laptop without a graphics card for video editing so just bear in mind all those things i said before about 4k oh, i wouldn't use it for 4k but i mean you can do it so i'd like to thank you guys for watching give me a thumbs up if you like this video if there's any questions leave them down there in the comments i will answer you and until next time cheerio